All right, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about our direct labor variance. So I'll pull up our spreadsheet again. Okay, so our direct labor, we actually used 15,700 hours. And we actually paid $16.50 per hour. So we actually spent $259,050 on labor. Our standard cost for making 8,000 units is two hours per unit at $16 an hour. So we expected to spend $256,000 to make 8,000 units. So our variance is our actual minus our standard cost and it's 3,050 and it's unfavorable because our actual was more than our standard. All right, so let's go look down here. We can split our direct labor variance into a rate variance and an efficiency variance. So the rate variance tells us if we're paying a higher hourly wage or a lower hourly wage than we expected, then standard. And our efficiency variance tells us if we're using more or less hours than we expected per the standard. Let's start with our rate variance. Our rate variance is actual hours that we used times the actual rate that we paid minus the actual hours that we used times the standard rate that we paid. So let's take a look. Our actual hours times our actual rate is we actually used 57 or 15,700 hours and we actually paid 16.50 an hour. Our actual hours are still 15,700, but our standard rate is $16. So if I take the one on the left minus the one on the right, I get a rate variance of 7,850, and that is an unfavorable direct labor rate variance. Okay. Our efficiency variance is actual hours times our standard rate minus our standard hours times our standard rate. So our actual hours times our standard rate is our 15,700 hours times our standard rate of 16. And we're gonna subtract from that our standard hours, which is 8,000, because we made 8,000 units, times we were, our standard was to spend two hours per unit times our standard rate of $16. So then if I do the math on this, I get a $48,000, this time a favorable variance. So this is going to be a favorable direct labor efficiency variance. Okay, then to check my work, I'm going to add together my two variances, 7850, unfavorable, plus the 4800 favorable, and I am going to get my direct labor variance, which is unfavorable overall. And the 3050 matches 3050 up here, so I know I've done a good job. All right, so what does this tell me? This tells me that my direct labor variance is due mostly because I paid people more than I thought I would. My standard was $16 an hour. I actually paid an average of $16.50 an hour. So we could go talk to the four person or we could talk to HR and say, why are we pe paying people more than the standard? Maybe there was some sort of plant-wide raise that went into place that we hadn't impact, uh, considered when we created our standard. Maybe we had people working overtime or on a holiday or on Sundays. Or maybe that average $16 rate is because we expected to use less experienced people and we actually use more experienced people who are being paid at a higher rate. That one may be likely because as we look at our efficiency variance, we actually have a favorable variance, meaning that we thought we would be um, uh, using 
enough hours to spend 256,000, but we actually only spent 251,200. We used less direct labor hours to make 8,000 units than we thought we would. And that gave us a favorable variance. So maybe because we were using more experienced people, they were able to do things faster. Or maybe the standard is outdated and we've implemented some new technology whereby it doesn't actually take two hours per unit anymore. These are all questions we can ask when we're trying to find out why did we have a direct labor variance. All right, let's uh, toss the overhead in here because um, this one's quick and simple, and then we'll go on to the more complicated overhead variance analysis. All right, so our actual overhead is $198,000. Standard is for 8,000 units is two hours at $12 per hour because we're allocating $12 per direct labor hour. So $192,000. And our variance, taking our actual minus standard, is $6,000 unfavorable. So all told, to create our 8,000 products, we thought we would, or we actually spent $849,900. We thought we would spend $832,000, and that variance in total is $17,900 unfavorable. So if I just told you the $17,900, you would say, oh my gosh, that's a big variance. I wonder what caused it. But because we've broken it down by direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and broken down direct materials by the price and quantity variance, and direct labor by the rate and efficiency variance, now we know where to go looking for what is causing our variances. All right, that's gonna sum up the direct labor variance plus the extra stuff I threw in. In the next video, we will talk about our overhead variance and how we can analyze those. All right, see you then.